um, there's an area called uh, the Sunken Village, and uh, for a reason, if you go into the houses um, in the winter time before I created Dragonfly Springs, you run your hands down the bedroom walls and they were soaking wet. Um, developers cut and, and run, they do a development and disappear, and we, the, pe the rest of the people of New Zealand, pick up the bill. Um, for and a friend of mine who's no longer at the Wangari Hospital, but Dr. Roger Tuck, used to tell me um, Sunken Village was his best business, and that's not a very nice thing. Right. But uh, my subject is uh, sediment. A um, long time ago, I, uh, 30 years ago, I met a Dr. Earl Shaver from the Auckland Regional Authority who um, wrote the papers on stormwater cleansing. And if you want to save your white bait, we need to have a think about and do something about stormwater cleansing. All roads lead to um, Rome, and to whatever goes on the road ends up in your freshwater waterways and then into the harbours. And um, we, I, um, the subdivision failed. I managed to buy the, the land because I don't fish and I don't play golf. And I, think I advise everybody to have a long a term goal for retirement because um, you can retire and die, or you can retire, and, even though I've had a couple of brushes with it this year. Um, the wetland project keeps me going. Right. Um, okay. Right. So probably like this. <laughs> right. This is back in around 1940. This is um, back around two, um, 2000. So in in the four, uh, well up into the almost the 70s, you could swim in this area here. Right. That's a, if anybody knows the Waimahunga Track, yeah. right, walk the Waimahunga Track. That there, there is the Waimahunga Track, the old railway line. Right, um, no houses, houses. Right, and what we we as human beings do is we go and cover the land with iron roofs. Um, Auckland International Airport concrete on our driveways, um, um, and uh, concrete um, footpaths and tarsial roads. And we, we then drive our vehicles, we leave our, our tyre rubber, our oils, all our poisons and that sort of thing, which won't do anything for the white bait. Um, goes in, it all goes into the harbour. And this is a classic case of sediment, clean sediment. Um, look that up. Mangrove, mum and dad mangrove come along and say, what a fantastic place to bring the children up. So they move in. They also um, produce leaf litter, and that grows and grows and grows. This area here you can walk across now after about 50 years. And that's happening all over our harbour, all over every other harbours. And if you go um, along the Wangarei Harbour, you'll see stormwater drains just going straight onto the beach, yeah. straight into the, into the harbour. Um, sedimentation I learned about for about 13 years on the Wangara Harbour Catchment Group. Um, we learned from NIWA and all the different organisations how um, eddies and how the harbour performs and it takes all that sediment to the outer edges and smothers. I have a 120 year old batch at Parakura. Um, all the locals used to come down and get cockles. There ain't no cockles there now because the sediment has killed couple um, beds um, and uh, my friend uh, Jack Price who owns the Celtic service station at Oakley will tell you and this is what I tell my um, students that come here granddad used to catch this many flounder dad catch that many flounder Jack catches this many flounder and it's what we as humans have done to our, our, to our waterways our harbours and that's uh, so it's just not um, just not sediment. It's the chemical makeup of what's going into the harbour. 
everything that comes off vehicles, trucks, and that is affecting our harbours. And we have um, four, three um, sediment traps, um, they're called four bays, and four gross pollutant traps. And I just took a photograph the other day with um, one of the ones my wife's been working on. We've probably taken about um, six cubic metres of, <coughs> of sediment out of that, just one gross, um, gross pollutant trap, and there's still more to go. And that's just one small area. Now, if you multiply that for the whole length of the Wangarei Harbour, that's an incredible amount of sediment. So I want to preach the word that we all should be putting um, pressure on local government and government to be protecting our um, our waterways, our, our harbours from sediment. And there are ways to, and TP10 and TP9, which uh, Dr. Ulshaver um, wrote um, with his staff in that. Um, I did bring him up to the Auckland Regional Authority and it goes back. And this was a long time ago when um, the North, Northern Regional Council was in what's now called the Indavasa um, building. So that's going back a few years. And it was like it fell on deaf ears. And we want to get unplug the wax out of some of the ears of people that can really make things happen. Right. Awesome, um, Jeremy. There should be, uh, yep. Um, well, that, we won a. Uh, an environment award in 2020 from the Northern Regional Council for well, we're a Cathay Stormwater Cleansing Wetland Sanctuary that's 15 acres running into a marine reserve and it cleans the stormwater that comes from the Anurahi shopping centre all the way through to the fire station. Water enters from the road through the stormwater system into a cross pollutant trap to pick up all the nasties and then goes through a sediment trap to get the sediment. From there it goes through a reed bed which takes out the toxic pollutants that are in the water system and from there it goes to the harbour cleaner than what it left the road. Stormwater cleansing wetlands are pretty rare in New Zealand. It combines the cleansing of stormwater with environmental education. Stormwater is very toxic. All the tire threadings, all the oils, the brake lining, automatic transmission fluid, sunk oil, all are toxic to our aquatic life. I would like to see the community pick up the baton and continue on the project both in stormwater cleansing and environmental education so that we have a new generation of environmentalists that make a difference and go ahead into the future with a better planet.